Hurry today. Up. Saying, didn't know that was that big of a story <laughs> today. All right, President Biden signing an executive order. Uh, changing policies at the border takes effect at midnight. Details in a moment. All right, we're also talking about uh, for, there it is. Uh, top story number two, um, officers uh, from the U.S. Capitol, Capitol Police officers who were there on the front lines during the day of the infamous attacks on the U.S. Capitol are in Erie. They made their way and Ethan actually talked to them earlier today. So we're going to have a little bit more on that Details story Details from their visit in a second. Plus, the Green Garden bike lane, much consternation about <laughs> that for considerable time. Construction on that set to begin soon. Details on the plan in a moment. All right, we're going to walk to the main desk here. You're going to see Ariana Moyer. She's going to talk a very interesting um, tech story for us tonight. But first, let's get to that executive order to slow the influx of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border by President Biden today. This order temporarily shuts down asylum requests once the average number of daily encounters between officials official ports of entry tops 2,500. And according to a White House official, that threshold has already been met. The border will reopen only when the number falls to 1,500. White House officials also say that migrants applying for asylum without what's called credible fear will be removed from the country. The executive order does have some exceptions, including uh, unaccompanied children. So we'll talk more about this in the next half hour. Two former Capitol Police officers visited Erie today, Sergeant Acalino Ganell and Officer Harry Dunn. It's part of a media tour through battleground states. They're making the stops on behalf of the Biden campaign, but they're not being paid outside of their travel accommodations. They say the public seems to have moved past the scenes of the January 6th riot, images and incidents that they can't forget. The two longtime Capitol Police officers say that's their message. They want voters to remember what happened that day and, in their view, vote to prevent it from happening again. 